So this is the experiment for cold hands, warm heart. You might recognise one of these little sachets as being a sort of hand warmer pouch. It's got a little metal disc in it that I can click and I'll use that in a moment to activate it. But I hope you can see from the way the metal disc is moving around inside that this pouch, this sachet, is filled with liquid. So when I activate it though and click this little metal disc, there, you can see that it's now turning to a solid. And as it turns to a solid, it gets quite warm. So I can feel that there, and that's why they're being used as hand warmers, these pouches. It's giving off quite a bit of, of heat energy. So this experiment is called the Sherbet Fountain. And I'm using citric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate. I've already put the citric acid into the beaker here, into the polystyrene cup. It's 30 centimetres cubed, and I'm taking the starting temperature of it. So I don't know if you can see, I think it's about 19 and a half degrees, um, the temperature of that. I'm going to add my sodium hydrogen carbonate to it, and I'm expecting it will fizz up, um, and the temperature should change. So we'll have a look and see what happens. see that fizzing and frothing in there. And you can definitely see the temperature changing on my thermometer. Temperature's dropped quite a lot, it's still fizzing in there. Now I think it is about eight degrees in there now, so that's a almost a 12 degree C drop in temperature on that, 11 and a half degree C drop. Maybe even more than that now. So you might like to have a think about whether this reaction is exothermic, which means it releases heat energy, or endothermic, which means it takes in heat energy, uses up heat energy. Okay. Okay, so this experiment is called Feeling Blue, and in this experiment I'm mixing um, some distilled water, which I've got in this polystyrene cup already, with some anhydrous copper sulfate. I don't know if you can see from the colour of this. Um, copper sulfate is usually a really strong, deep blue colour, and this is much paler, it's almost white, and that's because it's been heated and all the water of crystallisation that's normally in it, giving it that blue colour, has been driven off. Uh, so in a moment I'm going to add this anhydrous copper sulphate to my water in my polystyrene cup and we'll see what happens to the temperature. So at the moment I think the temperature is on 20 degrees C. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that um, if it's zoomed in enough on the screen for you to see that. I'm going to try now adding my anhydrous copper sulphate to it. Give that a good stir up in there. Okay, now you can see what's happened to the temperature. It's already changing. Okay, I don't know if you can see the colour inside my polystyrene cup as well. It's starting to get that classic deep blue colour to it that um, copper sulphate solution has. and try and get as much of it to dissolve as possible. Now I think the temperature is on 26 degrees now. So you might like to have a think about whether this reaction has been exothermic and released heat energy or endothermic and taken in, used up heat energy. This experiment is called decomposing. And in this experiment, I'm going to heat up some copper carbonate you can see in the jar there is a green colour, green powder. I'm going to use a nice blue flame to heat my to heat my copper carbonate, um, and that way I'm not going to make my glass boiling tube all sooty. So I'm using this nice clean heating flame. Now, while I'm doing this experiment, I want you to have a think about whether this is an exothermic reaction, one that releases heat energy, 
or whether it's an endothermic reaction, which is one that needs heat energy. What do you think? I should be able to observe some changes happening in this as I'm heating it up. is starting to change colour already. Okay, now what's happening inside there is my copper carbonate. It's very strange this because it looks like it changes to a liquid and boils. It's not, not a liquid at all. It's dry powder flurrying around as it's getting so hot. And it's decomposing in there and changing to copper oxide and producing carbon dioxide. Some of the powder's got into the flame there. You can see it giving a nice colour into the flame. It's quite exciting, isn't it? I think my, my copper carbonate has decomposed really nicely there. It's all copper oxide now, which is this classic black colour. I've even got some plumes of black copper oxide coming out of the mouth of my boiling tube there as well. And I want you to have a think about whether that process gave me heat energy, released heat energy, or whether I needed to give it heat energy for that change to occur. Now, if it was giving me heat energy, we would say that it was an exothermic reaction. If I needed to give it some heat energy and heat it up, then it's an endothermic reaction. So have a think about which one you, you think um, it is, exothermic or endothermic.